Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today we're going to go back and take a look at the ABS signal system that I showed you in several previous videos. And I'll remind you that back in October, November of last fall, uh, 2022, I did several videos uh, on the subject of ABS signals. I did one on a circuit board and I showed you how to install all this stuff. So what I never did though was show you how I install it here on the Piedmont Southern. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. A practical look at how I went about installing the signals here on the layout, how they operate, and how you can do that on your model railroad. So let's get started. Now, as you may remember, in the past, I've done videos on signals. I did videos on dwarf signals or ground signals. I did videos on how to install a special circuit that I showed you how to build that would allow you to control individual sections of a model railroad, like I do across the Rockfish River here on the Piedmont Southern. Uh, also, I did a video that showed you a little bit about installing block detectors on your model railroad, what goes into those, and that's very important for today's video. I did one on ABS signal systems, how they work, how you take what's used on the prototype and apply it on your model railroad. And that's a very important one because I went into how you go about wiring it and installing it on your model railroad, all kinds of factors like that. So if you decide to go ahead and proceed with doing this, you'll need to refer back to these videos. And those videos specifically uh, are uh, video 269 is the one on block detection. Uh, video 287 is the one where I went into all of the details and background on ABS signals, how they work, how you uh, convert that to something you can use on a model railroad, how you can wire it, all those kind of things are involved in that video. It is critical to understanding what I'm going to be showing you today. And then finally, video 289 shows you a circuit that I use here on the Piedmont Southern, and I showed you how you can get it, how you can order uh, uh, copies of the board and make your own circuits in order to do this. So that one is, is very important if you decide that you want to try to uh, install these on your model railroad. And to be honest with you, there probably are some off-the-shelf signal systems available out there for you. Uh, it's something you'll have to do the footwork and the research on the internet to find those. There's just a number of different choices available for you, and you just have to start doing searches uh, on Google or whatever for uh, ra model railroad signals. So what I want to do today, though, is first I want to take you over to the Piedmont Southern. And I'm going to show you how the signals actually work now that I've got some installed here on the layout. And then once I've shown you how that works, and uh, I'll show you also how you go about uh, setting up for detection on the layout itself using either your locomotives, your cars that are lit, or passenger cars, that kind of thing, and also something called detector wheel sets. So I'll show you those. And also, we will go ahead and then take a look underneath of the layout, and I'll show you how this is wired up, because everybody wants to know, how do you make all these connections on your model railroad? So I'll try to show you that under the layout. It's kind of difficult, because there's no good places where I have direct access to the wiring. It's all hidden behind the fascia, that kind of thing. So we're just going to have to try to work with trying to do that underneath of the model railroad itself. So well, let's go ahead and go over to the layout and get started. Well, here we are at the south end of Charlottesville Yard. And this is the point where I go from the Charlottesville Yard block to the first block south on the model railroad, which covers a an area called Glucko Mills and also Red Hill and services the Red Hill Quarry. There's a number of different industries located and tracks and sidings located along this uh, block. So what I want to show you now, though, is we've got this locomotive uh, sitting there at the light. Uh, let's assume he has a train behind him and he's ready to go south to Lynchburg. And he's got a green light showing. So that means that he can go ahead and proceed at normal speed without any restrictions and, uh, other than what he has in his train orders and head on south. But what happens, though, when we get something like a locomotive uh, that comes out of a siding ahead of him and is in that block. Well, obviously, 
you wouldn't want him to suddenly run into the backside of another train. So what we've got then, I'm going to put this detector wheel set here on the track, and you can see now that because that track is occupied and blocked, he now has a red signal showing uh, on the signal head. So that means he has to stop and wait there until that block clears and he gets a green signal ahead of him. Okay, what I've just done is I moved that detector wheel set over to another block, uh, two blocks ahead. So you can see now he has a yellow light. That means that the block ahead of him is unoccupied, but the one after that is occupied. So he needs to be uh, proceeding at reduced speed. And I covered uh, my, uh, de the definitions of reduced speed and all kinds of other speeds in one of the videos, I believe the one on ABS signals, uh, but it might have been the one on circuits. I can't remember exactly which video I covered that in, but it is in there. So you can take a look at that. So what this means is that he can now leave Charlottesville Yard with his train, proceed into the next block there for Red Hill at reduced speed. Now on the Piedmont Southern, I'm going to use half speed as, as the reduced speed. Now in some cases you might want to reduce it by 20 or 30 miles an hour. That's up for you to determine and define to your train crews. My feeling is that most of them are not going to be able to tell the difference between 20 and 30 and 10 and whatever miles per hour. Uh, they're going to know though pretty well what half speed is. They go half as fast, okay, uh, which for most of them is pretty fast. But at any rate, we've now got a yellow signal there that tells him what he can do. He can proceed at a reduced speed. As soon as that train leaves that block, he has a green signal. So now he can proceed uh, without any restrictions at all other than what's in his orders. So that's basically how it works. It's very straightforward. Now let me uh, move in here and I'll show you a few things. Now this is a detector wheel set. And what it consists of, these are just standard Intermountain HO scale uh, wheels that I got from Intermountain. And you can see that they're both the same in this, uh, in this truck. Now normally, both wheels on either side of the axle are insulated from one another. One of these has a plastic liner and that uh, isolates it and separates it from the other electronically. So on the model railroad, you normally, you wouldn't ever see any connection between these. What I've done here is, right here at the tip of the pointer, there is a 10,000 ohm resistor, surface mount resistor, that I have glued to the axle using uh, conductive cement that I got from uh, All Electronics, and it's available there. I checked in the catalog, it's still available. And basically, you just uh, use it to glue the little surface mount resistor at an angle so that the two ends of it, one end is up against the back side of this wheel, and the other end is touching the axle. And so the current flows from this wheel through this axle to the other side and to the wheel there and makes electrical contact with that rail. So you get a completed circuit. And that's how you do the detection. And you need this 10,000 ohm resistor here, otherwise your, your booster or your uh, PSX or whatever circuit breaker is going to think that you've got a short circuit. And that's typically what you use, a 10,000 ohm resistor. Uh, you can vary it, and they, uh, I think they talk about this in the uh, BD20 detector manual and various others. They'll tell you what size resistor uh, you typically need to use. But most of them, it is sized at about 10,000 ohms. So it's basically then just glued at an angle so that it's touching the axle, the metal axle, and also the backside of the wheel, making an electrical connection through that 10,000 ohm resistor. And there's one here and there's one here. Now typically, uh, on a actual car, I would put one of these on each truck instead of both on the same truck. And that way you make sure you've got detection at one end of the car or the other most of the time. Now the, the, the biggest problem that you'll run into with these is dirty wheels, dirty track, and cars that are too light. Because if the car is not pressing down with enough weight, then you're not going to get a good electrical connection through here and your detector is not going to work. But you can see I've got one surface mount here and one surface mount resistor right here. You can see it from the side at an angle. And these things, you can use full-sized resistors on these. They're harder to install, uh, in my opinion. 
because in these you're just gluing the resistor in place. Uh, but with a full size resistor, uh, you're going to have to solder it to the back side of the wheel and the axle or make some other kind of connection. Let me point out you can also buy these uh, detector wheel sets from some companies uh, do sell these. So you'll have to do a search online for those as to who is still making those. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Let me show you how sensitive this is. So all I have to do is put my finger across the track and it will conduct enough, enough electricity to throw the signals. So these are very sensitive uh, signals here. Okay, but at any rate, so this is a detector wheel set. I can put it right here on the track uh, ahead of him and you can see he now has a red signal. Now you could put one of these on a caboose, you could put it on a car, you could use this on a passenger car, whatever. Some people use this on every car in their fleet so that every car is detected. Personally, I don't need that. All I want to do is make sure that when there's a train sitting on the main line, that another train doesn't proceed and crash into it. So I want at least one set of detector wheel sets or a locomotive or a lit car on that train. So because of that, I'm perfectly happy to put a caboose on here or a passenger car that has lights. If I don't have lights, then I would just put detector wheel sets on that passenger train or on that caboose. And that would allow me to do that. Now I said caboose because one thing you can do, if you remember, I showed you how to do these lighting circuits for your caboose. And here's one on the layout. You can see that if I tilt it, we get a green, put it back on, and it's red. So if this is left sitting on the track, or if it's on the rear end of a train that's sitting on the track, it's going to tell that locomotive not to enter that block. And of course, anytime you have a locomotive moving into the block, and I'll show you that, as soon as that locomotive crosses the block gaps there, you get a red signal. Just like that. And it's going to stay that way until he moves into the next block ahead and it would turn to a yellow signal as I showed you a minute ago. Now of course you would have the same setup uh, in an, uh, for the other track, the northbound track. I just haven't installed those yet. That's the next step in my job here on the, on the layout. Uh, also you would have signals uh, if it was a single track mainline. And in the SHURB article it shows you how to set up and wire the single track mainline operation. So take a look at that article. And I showed a copy of that diagram in both, I believe, of the, uh, uh, the videos that I did on ABS signals and the ABS signal circuit. So everything that you'll need really is either in those previous two videos or what I've just shown you here on the model railroad. Here is the installation. So you can see right here we have the circuit board that I uh, showed you in previous videos how to, how to build. And right here are the three wires that go to the LED in the signal head. So we've got a red, a yellow, and a green connection here for each one of those lights. And then right here, this little one with the resistor on it that's got a black wire, that is the uh, positive connection uh, feed to the signals, uh, to the LEDs themselves. So that's the positive power. These would be the negative connection, which is supplied through the circuit. Okay. So this red wire here goes to a 12 volt DC accessory bus running under the layout. And I've showed you in the past how to go about installing accessory DC buses on your model railroad. And this is one of the reasons uh, for that is so that you'll have them for signaling. On the other side of the board here, we have a wire, this black wire right here is the wire that comes from the detector. So this comes from my BD20 and this carries the detection signal uh, when a car or a locomotive or anything with one of those detector wheel sets is present in the block. So that activates the signal board itself. Now, right here, this yellow wire that comes in is the one coming from the next uh, one of these circuit boards in line. And that's what turns on the yellow signal light here if there is a train occupying the second block ahead. 
And this green wire right here going to number one position uh, supplies uh, power directly to the green light. So I've got this set up so that the green light in the signal head is on all the time. And then when a detect occurs through the black wire, then the red light is lit up. And then if you get a detection two blocks ahead, the yellow light overrides and comes on. So that's how this system works. Pretty straightforward in that respect. And this, of course, as I said, is the circuit board that I had made up in China. And then I just installed all the components myself, as I showed you in previous videos. Now, you'll note here that I have, back up in here, I think you can see that, a little tab of Velcro. And I've got the other piece of Velcro here, the hook and loop section right there on the, on the, the back of this. So that's what actually holds it in place. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back up here and you can see that's all it takes to hold it in. It's very lightweight and it makes it very easy to get to it and keeps it out of the way when you don't need to get there to make any changes to the wiring. So then I have my wires, my bundle of wires, my detect wire, my yellow wire, my green wire, and my red wire for power feeding out. Okay. Now let me point out, what happens is when this detector comes on, it feeds 12 volt minus power to the circuit board. So that completes the circuit and that's why these LEDs will light up because we've got 12 volt plus here and then we've got 12 volt minus being supplied through the black wire when a detect occurs. And also when we get a signal through here, through the yellow wire, two blocks ahead to make the yellow come on, or right here, a direct connection to ground or negative uh, to keep the green light on. So this is the positive side of the circuit, and this is the negative side of the circuit. And then I've got all of these wires going forward. And also up under here, you probably can't see it, is one of my DCC power buses. Let's move on forward just a little bit so I can show you the detector connection. Okay, here's where my BD20 detectors are installed. And let me point out, you don't have to use BD20 detectors. I just, you know, knew I was going to need a bunch of them, so I bought about 20 or so uh, several years ago because I knew sooner or later something was going to get in the way and I wouldn't be able to get them. And unfortunately, uh, lately, they haven't been available, although uh, hopefully Jim has started getting parts in again to build these. But you can use these, you can use DCC Concepts version, and there's probably others available out there on the internet that I'm not aware of that you can find just by a quick search. So what we have here then is the BD20 detector. And I've shown you how these work in the video on detectors. And right here, I'll remind you, this is the current sensing transformer. And then we have a wire in each case, in each one of these. This one here, this, this one with the green wire goes to the rear uh, track. This one here with the red wire goes to the uh, front track, the one next to the aisle. So that's how I distinguish those two. Now you'll see that this red wire here that goes through the uh, current sensing transformer runs back here and is connected in to the main DCC power bus. So it's picking up wire uh, power off of one wire from the DCC power bus, goes through the current sensing transformer, goes out and goes up here to this screw terminal block right here. And then that screw terminal block, you can see this red wire here and here. These go out and provide power to the uh, one rail on the front track. And then the green wire goes out to this block here, and it's connected to this green wire, which in turn provides power to one rail on the rear track. Okay, So that's how I am able to separate the two tracks here on my double track main line. Um, then for power, I have these red and green wires here uh, that are the DC accessory bus. Okay, So that's a 12 volt uh, power input. 12 volt plus, 12 volt minus, and then here is that detect wire that goes out. So let me show you when I put something that is detecting, if I put something on the track that can be detected, and I'm just using a detector wheel set, you can see that that little red LED came on. So that tells you right away whether or not you're detecting or not. So I'll show you that. All I'm doing is tipping that uh, wheel set up and down to make that connection. So that tells you it's working. So every time that that little red light comes on and, and, and provides a detection indicator, 
a signal is sent out this black wire that goes back to the little circuit board I just showed you. And that's what controls your signals. So that gives you a close-up look at how the detectors are installed here under the model railroad and how they feed into the actual uh, signals or signal heads on the top of the layout. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope that gives you some ideas on how you can go about installing ABS signals like mine on your model railroad. They're really not that difficult to do. And so my suggestion is pick a spot, put in three of them together and take a look and see how that works for you. And then once you've done that, you know, it'll be just like dominoes to finish off doing your entire model railroad. So that's it. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. And I'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC guy. Bye now.